the first thing we're going to look at is the upward and pinning motion of a screw. So we've got ourselves a nice little screw. Doo, 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 doo. And it's got some kind of a radius R. And we are screwing it up like this. So we have some kind of a of a motion M. Now, what I want you to picture when you're trying to figure out how to do this is I want you to think about the fact that really what we've got is you've got these little rectangles, or really, really long rectangle. Um, I'm going to draw them a little bit more clear. Um, it's really going like this because they're wrapping around, so they're kind of extending out a little bit past. But what you can do is you can take this guy and oops, you can go like this. Um, you can take this guy that's wound around the screw and you can unwrap him. So this guy actually looks like this, going all the way up. And he's resting on the bottom of that thread. Because if you want to really exaggerate it whenever you cut a thread for something, um, you thread your holes, it's going to look like this. And your thread's going to be a little bit bigger than um, I'm making it as a square to try to match what we're doing here but it's going to be a little bit bigger than the screw that's coming inside so it's sitting on the bottom of that screw but not really not sitting on it's not fitting it's not a perfect fit so we're just going to consider it as sitting there on the bottom of it uh, to, to model it most accurately now I'm also going to add a force that kind of a force, this kind of a force. I'm also going to add a, it's a general force acting on the screw that's wanting to push things down. Um, you could think about this as being like a car, something like that. Car. Now all of a sudden, that doesn't make so much more sense. Car pushing down on it. So this could be maybe a jack. Um, so let me delete this guy. And I'm going to make him a lot bigger. Actually, so we can really emphasize you know, what's going on. I'll just draw the whole thing again. Um, so I've got myself a nice little ramp. And this, which I've said is an idealized version of my unraveled screw with a weight pushing down on it. All right. Now we have a moment and a radius, and I don't really want to deal with the moment right now because that's going to make things hard. So rather than writing as a moment, I'm going to think about it instead as a force pushing up. And um, how I want you to think about this is kind of like a, I'm going to try to make this up as I go. Um, that this is really a, a force pushing kind of at the tip of the steps of the tip of the screw. So this is coming out of the page. Support. This is me trying to draw a 3D thingy and it's not working for me right now. Um, but this is a force that has some kind of a, a depth to it. Um, you know, how will we draw it? Stuff like, oh, it's, yeah, yeah, I think that's what I want it to look like. Uh, yeah, that's a little, you know, it's coming up and out of the page. It's pushing, pushing on that little piece right there. Um, so we want to figure out, well, what would that force need to be? Okay, so for that force, we know that to create a for to create a moment, we need a force times a radius. So really all we're going to do is we're going to say, well, we're going to call that, whatever that force is, it's the moment that we've produced divided by the radius of the of the screw. So we're going to force this guy up here, like M over R, and so he's going to be forcing the uh, forcing it up for upward and pinning motion. So we want to go this way. Now, since we want to go this way, it means our frictional force is acting against us. Our frictional force is, no, you can't go that way. And we say, I'm doing it anyway. And we've got ourselves a normal force. And 
we also have a resultant of those two forces, which I'm going to draw in using the parallelogram law, just because it's going to make the picture easier to look at. And on these problems, the picture is always kind of hard to figure out. So, this is my normal force, and this is my frictional force. Now, since we have upward and pending motion, that means that our upward and pending, our uh, frictional force is actually the well, normal times the coefficient. And so that means that this angle here is going to be our angle of static friction. So it's between the normal and the resultant. The angle, the frictional angle is always the angle between the normal and the resultant. So we're able to use that um, to our advantage here. And I'm just going to move that. So now if we want to solve this, we're going to want to add our x and y components. So what we really need to do is resolve r into its x and y components. All right. So the way we're going to do that is uh, go this way, and it's going to go this way, just like that. Um, and we need to take advantage of some other information we know. We will know the lead angle of the screw. So we'll know the lead angle of the screw right there. And for lack of anything better, more clever to do, I'm just going to kind of take advantage of something right here and say, well, I know that this is 90. So that means this angle here is 90 minus theta. Go ahead. Out of the way. So this angle here is 90 minus theta. And what I'm really interested in is this angle right there. So what I can do is I can make a triangle that includes that angle. So I can say, well, I've got this parallel line here, parallel line here, and this parallel line here. And if I take this line and go in between it, then since this is 90 minus theta, this must be 90 minus theta. Myself in this little triangle here. And this is a right angle because it's that's the uh, the normal force and this is just in line with the frictional force. So we know that those are uh, what's it called to each other? Normal to each other. And so since I've got a right triangle, now I can determine that this since that's 90 minus theta, that little angle there must be theta. Now I can go ahead and delete all this extra information off my picture that I don't need anymore. No, not that. Um, I just got off a little bit. That's supposed to be down there. I've been having a problem with this. So that's my get my right there. So if I'm looking to resolve my resultant into its x and y components, this whole angle here is theta plus vx. So the opposite value, and I can go ahead and get rid of this guy here, he's not doing any good, is r sine theta plus vx. And the adjacent is r cosine theta plus vs. So I can sum up my forces in the x direction. And I'll get m over little r, now that's the radius, is equal to the um, resultant sine theta plus vs. And my sum of my forces in the y direction going to be w times r cosine theta plus vs. Now what I can do, because they make me feel really clever, is I can say, well, these things are equivalent, so I can divide them by each other. It's just like dividing one by one. So I've got m over r over w equals r sine this divided by r cosine this. I can say, well, my r's cancel out, and instead of having sine and cosine, I can make that a tangent, 
it's kind of a lame way to write it, but that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I've got m over r over w is equal to the tangent of this thing. Multiply both sides by w. And multiply both sides by r. And now I have a way to determine um, the necessary forces and things like that to cause upward motion on a on a screw of any kind.